on Cyber Sea Prison, especially Eva for the first time. And uh, yeah, for the, all the previous meetings, I was presenting my uh, work on, online, and I didn't have a chance to meet you in person. So I'm currently a PhD student, a five year PhD student in the CNUNI, and I'm, I'm currently writing my PhD thesis about the mechanical code. So uh, I'll just briefly introduce you the basic concept and how it works and uh, the technical details about the main program. The, uh, it's called electro the main program. So. All right, uh, I'll just uh, briefly introduce you the collection of magnetic focus and uh, what's the difference between the uh, magnetic focus and the performance of the new focus. So like, I, don't need to, uh, I don't think I need to uh, introduce two details about the conventional magnetic focus. Basically, it's just a magnet. Uh, it's, a, it's a just electrical magnet, and uh, um, to interact with the Earth magnetic field to change attitude while in the space. And uh, um, these are pictures of the conventional magnetic focus. Some of them are air force, some of them are uh, iron force. Basically, but they are all just electrical magnets. So we, we give the power, it becomes a magnet, and then we remove the power, it becomes a coil. And uh, the basic working concept for the conventional magnetic very simple, it's like one lead. It, the course can be iron or air, and uh, the microcontrollers on board control the on off of the uh, power to the magnet to make it magnetized or not. And uh, <coughs> the design's uh, concept is coming from the uh, idea that um, if we use electron magnets, then the good thing is that it can be configurable and control, fully controllable or it um, but cost, uh, the bad thing that it needs continuous power to operate, and the upper moment, which is the torque that can generate while in the space, is very, very small. So, uh, the most use of the conventional microcontrollers is just to uh, dehumble and do some rough attitude adjustment and to decentralize the, the reaction wheel. But uh, there are also some of the permanent magnet talkers, uh, the main talkers based on the permanent magnets. The, bad, uh, the good thing, of course, it doesn't need to consume power. Um, it does not need any power, but the, the bad thing that this uh, power configure we have to calculate everything, make sure that it's not damaging the mission and it's following the attitude. Is, uh, we have to calculate the attitude based on all it and everything. It's under control. But is there any way in between? Can we just uh, achieve the high torque to verify the permanent magnet? And can we also control it? Well, the answer, of course, is yes, and that's why I designed the new magnet talkers. So, the, uh, let's start from the basic performance uh, of the magnets. So, the horizontal axis is the uh, applied field to the electron magnets, and the vertical axis is the magnet field generated by the magnets, material itself. So, for the conventional magnet talkers, it runs on soft magnetic materials, especially ions or air, they also have magnetic. So if you apply a field, it will be magnetized, and if you remove the field, it becomes um, demagnetized. It might hold a little bit of magnetization, but uh, uh, it's very small. But for the conventional hard magnetic materials, especially the permanent neodymium magnets, it can hold the uh, magnetization for quite a long time, and it can generate a very high magnetic field. But it's hard to figure you can see that we need to apply a very strong inverse magnetic field to demagnetize it. So, uh, the key here is to find material to uh, um, can generate a very high magnetic field while it's the, uh, the external magnetic field is being moved and also it's easy to demagnetize. So, these are the, uh, these are the uh, figures of the com uh, commonly uh, available uh, common magnetic material. The very famous one, neodymium magnet, is here. It can generate a very high magnetic field once it's been magnetized and needs a very, very strong applied field to demagnetize. So what we are after is some, somehow this region. So the obvious on this very very high of this aluminum nickel coal fire material. It's been used for the previous mission as well, but nobody has used it for, for this purpose. So it can ge generate a very high strong magnetization while uh, the, the field is removed and it can be easily demagnetized, which means that we can simply change the magnet, make, uh, we can sh simply change uh, the states of the material. It can be magnet, it can be a, just a, a, a normal metal, 
and this uh, does not uh, need very much uh, power to, to reverse it. So this is the uh, property of the aluminum nickel uh, purple fast material. I'll just skip this one. So the basic concept is to, uh, mm, to, to change the state, to apply very high field to change the state of the magnetic position of the material. So unlike the previous one, we supplied continuous current to change it. We just use the, use the, use the battery to charge the capacitor first, and then discharge it to generate a very high current pulse to change the magnetic position of the magnet. And uh, this is a prototype I made for my thesis, of course. And uh, the center here is the z-axis. This is the size limit, thickness limit. The z-axis magnet is uh, have to be quite short. And uh, these two are the x and y axis magnet. And this bottom here is the charging circuit. So it's been controlled by the uh, Arduino server. It's just for test only. And just show you some technical details about this magnet. So that figure here is the charge. So the horizontal axis is the time in milliseconds, and the uh, vertical axis is the, is the capacitor where the charge voltage. It takes around 10 milliseconds to charge it uh, 200, around 230 volts, and it takes around like 20 minutes, uh, 20 milliseconds to charge with 400 volts. And the right figure here uh, is shows the uh, voltage output of the whole sensor. I put a whole sensor uh, adjusted to the magnet to measure the magnetization status of the magnet. So upon every pulse, it, the, the, uh, the magnetization of the magnet can be changed. First pulse, it brings from the maximum charge to around neutralized, and second pulse, reverse the clarity. And after some, some pulses, the, uh, if, if we say this is the soft south, and it can be charged to north. And uh, just show you something. Uh, so we uh, sent different pulses at 100 volts. Uh, uh, this is the voltage. Uh, we send different pulses, and the magnetization of the magnet can be changed as well. And uh, the, repeat, uh, the repeatability is quite good. And uh, the uh, maximum, uh, the residue reduction of the magnet can is, is related to the capacitor voltage. So we can program the magnet how strong the magnet can be based on the capacitor voltage. And uh, this is the relationship between the capacitor voltage to the and it's saturated at around 130 millitesla, which is not the set, which is not the maximum this, ma this material can do, but we can still improve it. We can still improve it. Ah, yeah. Uh, sorry. This is the uh, a long time uh, a time test to set to show you that it can hold the magnet. Uh, it can hold the magnet <coughs> for a long time. So I measured it for six hours time once it's charged, and it can hold the charge for for quite a long time. And once it's charged, it doesn't need, need to uh, consume any power to generate torque. And the only time it consumes power is when we need to change the status, change the magnetization of the magnet. This is the key point. So this is a comparison of the uh, performance to some other commercial magnetometers and uh, some uh, magnetometers using other missions. So the, uh, you can see the double uh, moment is normally around 0.2 to 0.3, and the fall, especially for the PCB magnetometers, which is what we use these days, is in general only 0 0.02. But the EBM, uh, and, uh, and it for Quava 2 can, it can generate like 1.28 uh, per meter square. Okay. And uh, this is the decumble test. So it can, uh, the test uh, is on the error table, which is not shown here. Uh, the normally measure is 0 0.06 kilogram meter square, and initial speed is uh, 20, 27 degree per second. And it takes around 82, 83 joules to detangle from negative uh, to 23, uh, 27 degree per second to zero. And the detangle time is 80, 800 seconds, which is way faster than, than the conventional one. And also the power consumption is around uh, 100, more than 100 times smaller than, uh, than the conventional one. And this is the rough test of the pointing. So I use the magnetometers to point to pointing to some angle. This is a, a single single step input, and this is multiple step input. You can see that it follows the, the command quite well. And especially for the single step, it can uh, can achieve 
plus or minus 0 0.4 degree pointing accuracy with the uh, proof of concept point algorithm. And if we refine the algorithm, we can do better. And this is the APM pair for the power two. So the, uh, the uh, performance is here, and uh, uh, for fast charging, can consume six volts, and for low power charging, can consume three volts. And once it's magnetized, it consumes zero power. So, uh, main talker uh, has some good things. First thing is low power. The second thing is it can generate very high torque. And uh, can do the like, program very fast. And uh, the, the response time for the pointing or deep 